Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a couple of weeks ago, I sat and I passed the CISSP exam. So I just wanted to do a quick video, just describing that entire process and what my prep strategy was. So uh, what exactly is CISSP? So CISSP stands for Certified Information System Security Professional. And to many, this is considered to be the gold standard in cybersecurity certifications. Right, so it's definitely geared to work towards more senior professionals and you know compared to something like security plus which could you know is a beginner friendly certification this is more a senior level certification so some of the rules it's got it's um, geared towards is that of security consultant CISO IT director etc so you are tested over several domains for this exam and you may have heard people said it's a mile wide and an inch deep and i could definitely agree uh, about that you know it's a lot to cover matter of fact for me personally i think this is probably if uh, if not the most difficult one of the most difficult exams i ever wrote right so uh, you'll be tested on eight domains across eight domains uh, those are security and risk management asset security security architecture and engineering communications and network security identity and access management security assessment and testing security operations and software development security so you can definitely understand when they say it's a mild while you know the very breadth of the exam it's a lot to cover right so the cost of the exam is uh, as of this video is 749 us dollars right and the format of the exam and i think this is what makes it a bit difficult is that it's a computerized adaptive testing so what this means on on unlike the linear exams which are just you know question after question on a linear um methodology i should say this with this computerized adaptive testing the questions actually change they are not in a certain sequence they actually changed based on how well you are doing so for instance if the algorithm detects you are weak in security operations it's just going to keep on giving you those types of questions to confirm whether or not you know that particular domain or let's say you're do doing pretty bad in a secure software development uh, security you know you're answering questions incorrectly it would keep on giving you those type of questions to really see if you understand the domain uh, or not you know so that's what that what makes this exam particularly hard you know difficult in my opinion in the past it was not like that it was basically straightforward you had these set of questions to answer and you just did it but now you actually have this computerized adaptive testing so the duration is three hours was you know and you could answer up to 100 to 150 questions so how it works the quickest you could finish this exam is at question 100 and if the uh, test engine um, confirms that yes this person knows their their stuff it would give you a pass as soon as you question 101 once you move on to 101 you would automatically pass the exam right after question 100 or if the, the uh, algorithm t still is kind of guessing if you're strong enough or not, you could answer 50 more questions and go all the way to 150 questions uh, to pass or fail. And you could, you know, pass or fail any, any, in any of those intervals before you reach the 150. So the passing score is 700 of a, out of 1,000. That's the scaling score. And the unofficial pass rate for this exam is 20 to 30 percent. So ISC squared, which is the body that uh, is um, that is responsible for this exam they don't publish the official pass rates but you know if you do some research online this is kind of the unofficial pass rate between 20 to 30 percent so it's definitely a difficult exam and not to be taken lightly um, uh, you need to have five years of work experience because aside from passing the exam you need something called an endorsement you know where you get someone who's already CISSP certified to endorse you you know you need to get that and you need to prove that you've been working for at least five years or more in the security industry so as I said before it's more geared to more senior professionals in the security industry 
Um, I know I mentioned it's um, the price already it's seven hundred and forty nine dollars. You can actually pay an extra. I think it's two hundred or two hundred and fifty US to get another chance. You get a free, well, not really a free, but a discounted retake. I actually did that, so my bill was close to a thousand US, and that was just to give me that extra assurance. Okay, if you fail, you could just reset the exam without having to pay the whole seven hundred and forty nine US dollars. And I would definitely advise you probably doing the same if it's your first time around sitting this exam to maintain a certification you need to pay the annual maintenance fee of 125 us dollars and you need to earn 40 cpes you know um over a three years period to maintain the exam all right so enough about i think you have a fair understanding what cissp uh on the whole is about right so here's the probably the most important part my prep strategy right so i took approximately 30 days that's three zero to prep for the cissp exam and i have been working in the industry for quite some time you know technology on the whole over 15 years more the security side of things about a little over six years so this is what this um, time frame will be applicable to me if you're someone more junior or not that much experience in security i would say you know give yourself at least three to six months out to prepare for this exam because it's definitely a lot to cover uh, in this exam right so my prep strategy was basically now starting off this guide the official uh, Cybex guide, right? The CISSP official study guide. This was the ninth edition. I bought this some time ago, right? There's now the tenth edition as of making this video, but this worked fine in my opinion, right? And uh, I didn't read out the entire book. I started reading it, and as you could probably see, I highlighted a lot of the the things in the book that I thought were relevant for me. So yeah, definitely a great resource. But I'm gonna be honest. I probably read through half of the book. And I literally couldn't take it anymore. It was too wordy and just a lot to read and consume, right? So after kind of making it with almost halfway through the book, I ditched the book and I decided to use some other resources. So one particular resource that was my main resource, I'd say, in terms of preparations was uh, a series in YouTube from Inside Cloud and Security by uh, the name of a guy named Pete, right? I forgot his last name, but um, he, he was the one who actually created these, these CISSP videos and they go through all the various domains, right? And even some of the additional things not covered in the ninth edition of the book, that's in the tenth edition of the book, he actually covered that with an addendum video. So yeah, he has a really good YouTube playlist of CISSP uh, prep videos and even did one with or a couple with uh, questions, practice questions, you know. So I would say his uh, YouTube videos was the greatest learning resource for me personally. And don't worry about it. I'm going to link all the resources I'm discussing here in the description down below. I'm not getting any commission or anything or no affiliate links here. All this is just free knowledge I'm sharing uh, that would be hopefully beneficial to you. So yeah, I said I did uh, Pete's YouTube videos. I did them a couple times, maybe like four or five times in the 30 days. Uh, Kelly handled Hand to hand, I hope I'm pronouncing her, her name correctly. She also has some videos, some CSSP videos in Cybery, right? So Cybery is a learning platform that you learn a lot of different security uh, concepts, you know, they have a bunch of different courses. I had a, um, I'd signed up for a free account a long time ago and I still had access to Kelly's um, CSSP prep course. I reviewed her course as well and it was definitely uh, useful kind of helping reinforce some of the concepts from Pete's uh, videos. So in terms of study material, uh, Pete's was number one, Kelly was number two, and the prep guide, what I did, whatever I wasn't that strong in after watching all those videos, I went through the official study guide, you know, to help me kind of nail along some of those concepts that I was weak in. And I advise you to do the same. If you're doing the videos, kind of go through them a couple times and your weak areas, you know, you could go through the official study guide or other resources to help kind of reinforce those uh, concepts, right? Uh, in terms of testing now, what was the 
biggest sub for me was a test engine by the name of Quantum Exams, right? It's a, a subscription-based uh, test engine. I think it was like roughly 120 US dollars for the entire year. I only used it for a month, but I would say it was well worth it, guys. You know, the CISSP questions, they are phrased in such a way that if you only know the theory, like the books and the videos, you're not going to pass that exam. They phrase them in such a unique way, and you hear other people talk about this as well. You need to have some sort of realistic uh, past papers or practice questions before going into the exam. And I think that's where quantum exams made the difference for me. Because I thought I was solid on the material, the study material, but when I started to do the quantum exam practice test, I was like getting like below 30% on the exams, like 30, 40. By the end of my prep, my prepping, I was more to 60, 70%. I was getting correct in quantum exam and if you're getting around 60 70 or even more than 50 I would say you have a good chance of passing the exam I think even the creators of the exam they said you're not going to get a hundred percent on these practice questions but once you're kind of close to the 60 percent and over you're in go a good position to pass the exam some other questions I did was by a guy named Luke Ahmed, I uh, hope I'm pronouncing his name correct, but he was on TikTok and YouTube. He's also an uh, instructor. He has an, a book as well too that helps prep you for the CSSP exam. I'll probably leave a link down below. I can't remember it right now. But yeah, he had uh, he has a great method of teaching and phrasing the phrases phrasing sorry these practice questions that they are very realistic to what you're going to experience in the actual exam itself you know so the quantum exams and the questions that luke ahmed uh in the uh did you know those were basically the main thing that got me in the mindset you know the cissp mindset and this is something that you hear a lot of people talk about you need to have that cssp mindset you need to think like a manager it's probably cliche you're gonna hear a lot of people saying that over and over but you really do for the exam and i think that's one thing about cssp like just studying for it and um consuming the knowledge and passing the exam itself right it's like you need to have a mindset change especially if you're someone like myself who has been mostly in the technical part of things you need to see big picture you need to see the big picture side of things so you're not kind of digging in the weeds with firewalls and stuff you're looking at strategy level policy level that's what you need to understand and as i said the practice practice exams you know they kind of really were uh, integral for me you know to get into that mindset all right so my exam experience right so i give you an overview of what the exam what cssp is about my prep strategy and now for the exam experience so i had to go to a testing center and i think it's pretty much standard for everyone sitting any of isc squared exams for some reason they don't want you to do it home because i know like comte microsoft a bunch of these other vendors i've ha sat the exam at home and just been it has been proctored remotely isc square doesn't want that they want you to go down to a test center so i went down to a test center which is located about 30 to 40 minutes away from where i live a matter of fact i arrived about 30 minutes earlier as suggested by isc square as well and I was a little bit nervous, to be honest, because, I mean, at the end of the day, you uh, do all this preparation and you still don't know for sure if you'll pass. Not to mention, if you fail, uh, you lose all that money because it's a pretty expensive exam. But yeah, I was a bit nervous, but nothing too overbearing. However, I was still very confident because I believe I knew the material. I had a firm understanding of the concepts and the material that the exam comprised of and also i think you know the practice questions made a big difference because it kind of gave me an indication how the questions would be coming at me so my personal goal was to finish the exam as quick as possible at question 100 as i mentioned it could go all the way up to 150 questions you know but the algorithm itself once you reach 100 uh, question 100 it have a good idea if you know 
uh, the concepts and the knowledge required for this uh, certificate. So once you reach out and request them, if all goes well and you click next, then you'll be prompted with a survey. Once you get that survey, you know you have passed, right? And if not, you just continue going to additional questions until you pass or fail the exam, right? So I went in there confident, you know, I, I, um, I manage my time and this is something you have to be mindful of. You need to manage your, your time because 300, uh, three hours sounds a lot, uh, but if you're doing the whole 150 questions, it's not that much time, you know, so you need to have proper time management and something I forgot to mention, but I actually timed myself when I did the practice exam just to get into uh, that kind of uh, speed that was required, you know, in terms of answering the questions. Well, right, but yes, yeah, so I went in there, uh, the dual orientation, you have to put your hand, print, etc. I went into the exam room, uh, I saw the questions come in and I answered the questions and then I reached at question 100 and I still had like an hour to go. It was only two hours that passed. And when I clicked on question 100, guess what happened? I got the survey, right? So luckily my goal came true you know, in terms of passing at question 100. I saw the survey and automatically I knew I had passed the exam once I saw that survey. And I went through the survey and then I went to the front desk after finishing the survey and collected my um, provisional passing form they give you with the uh, congratulations, you passed this year, you provisionally passed this year SSP exam. And the next step after doing that, now you know, well, first of all, I was elated. You know, I felt this was probably one of the most happiest times in my life in terms of certifications, right? Because this, as I said, is like the gold standard in terms of certifications. So I was super excited because it, um, it let me know, you know, all the studying, all the sleepless nights, etc., was worth it. You know, and something I probably didn't mention, but I studied for 30 days and I usually studied like around uh, three to four hours per day for the 30 days just to ensure I had the knowledge required to pass this exam. But yeah, it was the greatest feeling in the world. Uh, but it didn't stop there. What I had to do, ISC would send you an ISC squared would send you an email. You need to get someone who is already CSSP certified to endorse you. So I got my former boss, you know, he endorsed me. And uh, after, uh, I also had to do my part where I had to upload like my job experience and evidence of, you know, like past job letters and stuff to show them that I had more than five years experience in the security industry. And within about four weeks after that, uh, I got the official certification, the CISSB certification. I got it, you know, and um, yeah, and I got the badge as well. So all in all, it was a nerve wracking, you know, a very intense uh, uh, period in my life where I had to be studying a bunch of hours every day for the 30 days. But you know what? It was all worth it when I saw that I passed the exam and I got that CISSP certification. So I didn't mean for the video to be this long, but I just want to really give you a thorough analysis and my experience of uh, sit, preparing and sitting the CISSP exam. So in closing guys, remember if you like this sort of um, discussions, anything security related, technology related, etc. and you have not already, why not consider subscribing to the channel and hit on the notification bell so you'll be notified once a new video is released. Also, uh, before I go, I did some notes for myself during the prep preparing for this exam. So I'm going to leave a link for it in the video description. It's freely available. This took me weeks to gather, you know, just to uh, condense it, you know, to some useful notes for myself. And I'm going to share it with you because I want you to succeed as well if you're thinking about sitting in this exam. Okay, and that's it for me. And as I said, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.